So let's focus on the glomerulus now. So the glomerulus is a network of capillaries at the beginning of the nephron that acts as a filter of blood into the kidney. So when we started with the interlobular arteries, and those are going to feed into these glomerular capillaries at the beginning of the nephron. Now these the blood in the glomerular capillaries have, have two choices. They can either get filtered into the Bowman space of the nephron, and not all the not the red blood cells, but the plasma and different particles in the blood, or the blood can keep going and go into the efferent arterial. So now, next, we're gonna look a even closer, take a keep closer look at the glomerulus, and so we're gonna see how the glomerulus works to filter the plasma. It has three barriers to filter plasma into the kidney to become urine. So let's say we have our blood. This let's look at this picture here now. We have our little blood, and then we have our plasma, and it has to pass through multiple barriers to get into the Bowman space of the nephron. First barrier is the fenestrated capillary endothelium. So this fenestrated here is referring to these little spaces between the, the endothelial cells of the capillary. And these spaces are where our different particles and our plasma can filter through. Once it gets through this, through this fenestrated capillary endothelium, next step is to go through the glomerular basement membrane. And once it's gone through that, then it has to go through the podocyte foot processes. So a photo, a podocyte, what, what is that? A podocyte is a cell that wraps around the capillaries of the glomerulus, and they have these foot processes, and they uh, inner, inner, what is it, inner, they basically overlap, that's the word. And then so there's little spaces in between them where different particles can get through. So we have our three different layers, and each barrier uh, both of the all three barriers filter the blood through two different methods through charge and through size so what you don't see in this picture is that all of these barriers have a negative charge to them okay a negative charge in all these barriers so negatively charged products here do not go here they they get repelled negatively charged ions and proteins get repelled from this barrier and go into the efferent arterial the other thing is the size as you can see here is limited size for particles to get through. So if you have a very large protein here, it is not going to get through this um, these barrier. So if I, again, just to reiterate, what were the three different barriers? We have to go through the fenestrated capillary endothelium, through the glomerular basement membrane, and through podocytes. And then these uh, these three barriers work both by charge and by size. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the the rate of filtration. So how does this how does this vary and how is it controlled? Well, it depends on the various starling pressures across the glomerulus. Do you remember what the starling pressure, what that meant? Remember there was the hydrostatic pressures and then there's the oncotic pressures. And then you can be either, either in, the, in the capillaries, as you can see here, or it could be in Bowman space. Higher hydrostatic pressures in the capillary will cause fluid to filter through. Proteins, which influence oncotic pressure, will cause fluid to come in. So it's going to go the other way. It's going to decrease your filtration if you have extra proteins in your plasma. And finally, if you have high, on, high hydrostatic pressure in your Bowman space, that's going to push fluid here and you're going to decrease your filtration. So let's talk about how these uh, different factors can, can be variable. So hydrostatic pressure in capillaries. It's so glomerular capillaries. So the hydrostatic and the glomerular the capillaries is regulated by this and this. What is this? Now this is the what, what arterial that feeds into the glomerular capillary? It's the afferent arterial. And this one is the one that allows blood to exit. That's the efferent arterial. And the way you remember this, because I often get confused, is A is first and then E. So A to E. Kind of like how Amazon has that Amazon, you know? Cause, and then they go from A to Z because they carry every single product from A to Z. Here we go from A to E. Okay, so now, how does these arterioles change hydrostatic pressure? Well, let's think about what if we dilated this arterial? What's going to happen to the amount of blood in these glomerular capillaries? Increased dilation means more blood flows, and so you have increased blood in the glomerular capillaries, and that increases your hydrostatic pressure. What if you dilated these, these efferent arterioles? Well, now you're going to have extra blood leaving the glomerular capillaries. So now you have decreased hydrostatic pressure. Okay? And then if you do constriction, then it's in the opposite. Now I want to talk about two different 
substances. Number one is prostaglandins. Prostaglandins, what they do is they dilate the afferent arterial. So you remember that is prostaglandins dilate the afferent arterial and it's PDA. Remember that congenital heart disease, patent ductus arteriosus, and how you give them prostaglandins and it keeps that ductus patent and it keeps it open. That's how you remember what prostaglandins do here. And what will that do to your hydrostatic pressure again and to your filtration overall? We just talked about that. Dilate the afferent arterial, increase hydrostatic pressure, and then you're going to increase GFR, glomerular filtration rate. Now let's talk about angiotensin 2. This is another substance, and what it does is angiotensin 2 causes constriction of the efferent arterial, and that's ACE. You remember that because you have something called the ACE, the angiotensin converting enzyme that's related to angiotensin 2. We're going to talk about that more about that later. So if you constrict it, and if you constrict the efferent arterial, what happens to hydrostatic pressure and GFR? Well, constriction of the efferent arterial means less blood flows out, it means you have buildup of blood in the glomerular capillaries, so increased pressure and then increased GFR. So just remember PDA, ACE, and you'll be good to go. Next, we're going to talk about oncotic pressures in the glomerular capillary. And again, remember that's uh, it's affected by levels of plasma protein concentration. Now the one you want to think about is nephrotic syndrome. That's one we'll learn about later. But basically, you pee out large amounts of your protein in your urine. So if you're doing that, then your what well, happens to the amount of protein in your blood? The amount of protein in your blood goes down, so you have decreased osmo uh, oncotic pressure. If you have decreased oncotic pressure in the uh, glomerular capillaries, what happens to your hydrostatic pressure? Uh, what happens to your GFR? Well, GFR is going to go. It's going to go up. Okay. Because now there's less proteins relative to the to before compared in the Bowman space. So now water is going to go from the capillaries into the Bowman space to even it out. So you can have increased GFR when you have decreased oncotic pressure. Finally, you can have increased and you can have hydrostatic pressure changes in the Bowman space. Okay. Static in the Bowman space BS, okay? And the main thing that affects this is obstruction of urine flow. If you obstruct this urine flow, then what's going to happen to the pressure in the Bowman space? The pressure goes up, increased pressure. And then, so what's going to happen to GFR if you have increased pressure here? Well, and all this increased pressure is going to push this way, and then it's going to decrease GFR. It's going to reduce, reduce the propensity of plasma and fluid to flow from the glomerular capillaries into this high-pressure Bowman space. Let me erase all this now. We we'll talked about what affects GFR. Now I want to talk about the filtration fraction. So this is the fraction of total renal plasma flow that ends up being filtered across the glomerulus. So total renal plasma flow is all this blood and all this plasma that flows to this kidney, to this specific renal tubule. And then what, fla what fraction of all this blood flow ends up getting filtered through here? And so the, the filtration fraction equals that, is equals that GFR over uh, RPF. This is RPF, and this is GFR. Okay, normally, the normal person, GFR is around 20% of um, total renal plasma flow. So 80% goes out here, goes into the efferent arterial, 20% gets filtered into the renal tubules. Now I want to test your understanding of GFR and RPF. And what happens? So this is basically a review, kind of, and we're talking about more things. This is a review of what we just talked about. If you you can just do it by yourself, or you can watch along, and I can explain things to you. If you want to do it by yourself, you can end your end the video now. Take a look at the notes whenever you please, and keep watching the next videos. Because I have this box in the notes. Construction of the afferent arterial. What happens to GFR? Remember, now you're going to decrease hydrostatic pressure. So GFR goes down. What happens to renal plasma flow? Again, GFR goes down. Actually, let's draw this out here. So this is the afferent arterial and the upper glomerular capillaries. This is the efferent arterioles. So you have decreased GFR, GF, decreased RPF. They're both equally decreased, so there's no change in the filtration fraction. Next, constriction of the efferent arterial. What is going to happen here? Constriction of the efferent arterial, increased hydrostatic pressure, increased glomerular filtration rate. 
What's going to happen to the total renal plasma flow if this constricts? Well, now there's going to be less blood flow. There's a higher pressure, the less blood flows through this, all of this. So there's less, less blood in, and so there's less renal plasma flow. What happens to your filtration fraction then? Filtration fraction is this going to go up? Okay. Next is plasma protein. What happens if you increase plasma protein? What happens to your oncotic pressure? That's increased oncotic pressure. And so that is decreased glomerular, glomerular filtration rate. What happens to your renal plasma flow? Nothing changes. It doesn't matter how much protein is in your plasma. It's still just going to flow through this same as always. So thus your filtration fraction will go down. Now what if you decrease plasma protein? What's the opposite? So you already figured this out. It would be going up. Then renal plasma flow again, no change. So this would be up. Now what happens if constriction in the ureter? So this is the ureter area down here. That's the, the outflow. This is actually, this is not the ureter, this is the renal tubules, but we're going to say, oh, eventually down here is the ureter. So what's going to happen to your um, your starling, the starling different mechanisms? We're going to have increased pressure in the Bowman space, so that's going to lead to a decreased GFR. What about renal plasma flow? Is, there, is it going to change? Is this going to, is this going to affect this flow of blood through here? No, there's going to be no change, and so your filtration fraction is going to go down. Finally, what happens to dehydration? What happens to your GFR? Well, there's going to be less blood in, in dehydration, so less hydrostatic pressure, so GFR goes down. But then the thing is that renal plasma flow is going to go down more than GFR. And the reason why is I need to illustrate this. Um, let's see. It's, it's all based on, based on renal compensatory mechanisms that we'll talk about. And specifically, it's going to be based on angiotensin. So in dehydration, you're going to get angiotensin 2 release. And remember what angiotensin 2 does. Do you remember its function? Do you remember that mnemonic I told you about? Angiotensin 2, mnemonic is ACE, constriction of the efferent arterial. So we're going to constrict this, right? Remember what we just said about constriction of the efferent arterial? That causes a lot of decreased renal plasma flow. And that's even on top of the dehydration. So it's dehydrated too, so it's going to be even less. And this constriction in the efferent arterial actually increases the GFR a little bit. So GFR was low because of our low, of our low blood flow, so this dehydration low. But then we're going we're gonna, to, let's see, it's going to improve GFR through this constriction in the efferent arterial while at the cost of having lower RPF. So in this case, now we have one arrow over two arrows, and then so you're actually going to have an increased filtration fraction here. So I hope, um, review this, do not memorize any of this, make sure you understand it based on the different physiology. And so now, next topic we're going to go on to is clearance.